Hi everyone, in this video I share my right review of the sweet sounding FCX or FZX. I would like to thank my dear friend who lent me this bike for a test run. Right off the bat, I must mention how sweet sounding the bike is. I am not sure what Yamaha has done with the exhaust considering that this engine is the same as on the FC. Love the throttle sound throughout the ride and it sounds much more fun when you rev match and downshift. Having this unique sound is also a head turner. As always, looks are subjective and frankly speaking, I dislike what Yamaha did with this bike, especially the front. I think going for a fully round headlamp unit would have been more aesthetically pleasing. The grab rails on the back and the hand holder on the side looks like they were designed on a napkin while the designer was drunk. If I am the one purchasing this motorcycle, I would definitely change these two things on the bike. The overall build quality of the metal body, the fit and finish and the paint quality is good. In the looks department, it is a half-baked and lazy product by Yamaha. As soon as you mount the bike, you are greeted with a pleasant seating posture with a forward set foot peg and enough legroom for sitting relaxed on the bike. This is in contrast to the riding triangle of the FC. The seat is really comfortable and you have enough room to sit forward or further back than usual if that's your cup of tea. The change in riding triangle is also attributed to a 20mm hike in the seat height from its elder sibling. The seat height is 8-10mm. The cushioning of the seat is quite good as well and offers a comfortable feel even while going through bad roads. While the engine and transmission are the same as on the original FC, that's where the similarity ends. While the FC is a street sport motorcycle, this is a metallic urban cruiser and the power delivery felt quite different. I was shocked that the FCX is just 4 kilograms heavier than its sibling. But it makes sense when you understand that the tank capacity has reduced from 13 liters to 10 liters and that almost everything except the metal body parts is the same. While riding the bike you will not feel the weight but when you are demanding all the horses to pounce like a wild cat, that's when you feel underwhelmed given the fact that there is no satisfactory top end whatsoever. The bike can be pushed to 80 but beyond that it just refuses to climb with ease. And if thrill seeking is something that you are expecting from this bike, look elsewhere. I would say that comfortable cruising speeds on the highway is somewhere between 70 to 75 km per hour. As long as your expectations from this 149cc engine is within reason, the engine will feel smooth. I did not feel any kind of heat even after pushing the bike for some time. There are no vibrations on the foot pegs and handlebars unless you rev beyond capability. The clutch is light as expected, the gear shifts were smooth and precise, and I did not encounter any false neutrals on the long ride. Yamaha should have added a gear position indication on the console though. The fuel economy reported by the owner is around 47 to 50 km per litre on average. I was pleasantly surprised on how confident the bike made me feel on the corners. It's not a corner cover by any means, but it instills a lot of confidence going into corners. As usual, the MRF rubber attributes to a slight disappointment in the corners. The handling is predictable and more than good enough for the power this bike produces. Overall, I'm happy to say that the handling genes of its siblings are present here too, albeit in a different manner. The relaxed posture and the confidence-inspiring handling are something that I like on this bike. Even though many users say that turning radius is wide, it's easy to maneuver and take U-turns with ease. The suspension felt more or less the same like its sibling. However, maybe due to the added 4 kilograms, it felt ever so slightly smoother. It doesn't mean you should run into potholes with confidence. On and off the road, the suspension felt adequate on rational expectations. Overall, it felt better than the street sport sibling and felt better on broken roads. The block pattern tires help with the grip on broken patches too. Braking is okay for the power delivery, however I personally would have liked a little more bite for the front brakes. I did not feel any unnecessary ABS intrusion as well. I cannot comment on the pillion seat comfort but the seats are wide and soft. The Y-Connect app is a hassle rather than an informative tool. 
There are sync issues and UI is not good as experienced by the owner. Due to Bluetooth being on all the time, two of my friends have reported battery drain which eventually led to decoupling the Bluetooth module and replacing the battery entirely. What's the verdict then? If you would like an urban cruiser which is smooth to operate, relaxed and calm in manner and doesn't mind slow paced highway runs, this is something to consider. But one thing is for certain, unless you are a fan of getting stranded, save yourself 12,000 rupees and go for the standard variant. Use that 12,000 to make the bike better looking instead. If you have any queries or suggestions, please leave it in the comments. I would also like to know whether you guys would enjoy travel content along with the bike related videos. Thank you for watching, stay awesome and ride safe.